we're developing their skills to be able to give a final presentation, which is going to be a speech. All right. So, what, what did we do in the beginning when I came up here? It was a small version of the speech, right? And, right, uh, when I first told you guys that you guys are all going to be standing up in front, I was going to give you guys two seconds to prep, and you guys are going to come up. How did you guys feel? Especially the first thing that, first, that came up. How did you feel? A little nervous, right? Even me, I feel, I'm still feeling pretty nervous right now, standing up here. Right? What about, um, how, did anyone else feel a little bit nervous here? Raise your hand. A little bit, right? Yeah. Even though you guys are in front of the classroom every day, what's the difference here? No one's No one's evaluating. So you don't have to do. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I feel like for us, we're, we're speaking in front of our peers. That's what their, our students are going to be doing. What's the difference between what we just did right now and what our students are going to be doing? Can you guys think of some differences? What, what, just, what did we do? Huh? Yeah. Exactly. What level are these students? I when you guys were telling us uh, what classes you guys have taught, how many of you guys taught EC? You guys, EC, all right. Uh, memory, mega. Okay, cool. All right. So you guys do have some background. How do you think your EC students? Yeah, right. They're speaking in a different language, right? And they're speaking usually in their CTPs. How do you think they do? How do they feel when they come up here? When, like at the end of the class, when they're doing the CTPs, how do they usually feel? Do they are they as nervous? They are they they're pretty nervous. Not as nervous though, right? Because why? They're with a group. They have all these people and they have these notes, right? They're with these groups, but in a speech, they're going to be standing up there by themselves, like Rihanna said. They're speaking in a different language and the EC level. How do you think your students would do if I gave them the same exact assignment, two minutes to prep? What do you think would happen? Yeah, right? Uh, especially the first day, what do you think would happen? Like they don't know each other yet. What would, Jeff, what would happen in your class? They probably would cry. <laughs> right? If I was that age and like someone told me to go, go speak in uh, Swahili, right? And you have two minutes to prep, uh, I'd just be like sweat would be dripping down my face and I'd probably curl up and cry, right? So we do have to keep in mind that this is for basically our lowest level students. But the speech that the speeches that they're giving, they're actually pretty advanced, right? They're not that good, they're not that easy to do. Good. So the goal of this class is to get them prepared for uh, and so like we said in the first class, they're going to feel really nervous, they're going to be speaking a different language, and um, yeah, they're going to, they're going to be um, by themselves up here. So what are some skills, real quick, what are some things do you think that uh, we, we're going to try to help build up in this class? Um, and what do you think uh, the objective, has anyone looked at the objective? What are we trying to help them with in the program? What do you think the point of this class is? How, so we don't expect them in the beginning, we don't expect them to know very much, but by the end of this class, what are we trying to get them to do? Uh, Blake? Um, developing speaking fluency and confidence. Cool. Speaking fluency, right? Because EC levels, how's their speaking fluency going to be in their first day? Yeah, like you said, my name, Peter. Uh, and then, and even we were doing that. I was doing that. I got, I got bumbled up in my head. I had an order of what I was going to say. But I was like, ah, oh, man, there's so many people looking at me. I, I kind of lost my own track, even though I'm speaking in English and I'm pretty experienced, right? So that's going to happen, right? So speaking fluency. And what else? Confidence, right? We need to build up these students' confidence. Uh, right away. Just Brainstorm real quick. What do you guys do for your students that are really, really shy, that are not uh, speaking that well? What about uh, Mike? What would you do for a student that's sitting there really, really quiet? Um, what is it? At the desk or, or he's sitting up? Okay, like sitting the other students sitting up. How would you try to uh, kind of build up his confidence over a course? Over a course, just give him like, more positive feedback and negative. Exactly. Right. Okay. Positive reinforcement. All right. They do something right. Bam! I find that was amazing, right? 
uh, you did you had great eye contact. You worked really really well on uh, uh, you had great organization um, and you spoke very loudly. Excellent. Very nice. Cool. Good job. Especially in the beginning, you got to give them more positive feedback. You yeah maybe like one little thing in the beginning. Maybe you could uh, take your hands out of your pocket. But everything else, man, you did a great job, right? And you keep doing that, especially for lower level students. I naturally do that. I don't know how you guys are. Are you guys naturally like very, very encouraging? Or do you, you know? No, are you allowed to do that? Do the same thing with my Albert Cross Plus class? Oh, like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> like, at your age, teacher. <laughs> yeah, I had that problem. Too. But yeah, exactly. Right. So, like, from my personality, is I'm like, I'm just giving high fives all day. But so I feel like that is going to be very, very important um, to keep in mind for this class as well, because the material, as we're going to see very, very soon, is. Um, it's going to be a little difficult for them to get at first, all right? So what? So it is difficult. How do you think we should uh, approach this? Let's actually um, open up our hand, our little handouts. Let's go to. Um, actually, of course, sorry. Before we get into an actual class, let's turn to page one, where it says page one over here. All right, it says, welcome to the speaking workshop. We kind of went over this. Gives them a little bit of background. This is actually what you're going to be, this is your actual page one of your first day in the speaking workshop, okay? This is what you're actually going to be going over. Hello, Andy. Stop smiling. <laughs> All right, so you guys, <coughs> this is material you're actually going to be going over. Try to pick, uh, come up with a little bit of an introduction, All right? So you're going to be talking about speech skills, giving speeches, individual feedback. And then here's the basic class structure of every class. Um, they're going to, their homework assignment, you're not going to see it in the first part. I'll show you guys at the very end. Their homework assignment every week is going to be um, memorizing a speech that they worked on in the previous class. Okay, so that's how you're going to start every class. You're going to actually start with the presentations of what they memorized. Okay? Uh, we're going to get more into the homework. And then we go into what we do in most of our CL classes. We teach them what? During, in the second hour, we go into skills theory. Skier, skills, theory. skills theory, skills application, right? We teach them all these skills about um, how to come up with a speech that's organized and how they can pass this information along. Um, and then we're going to, yeah, exactly. They're going to do a lot of development. This is going to be very similar to their skills. They're actually going to, it's going to be a very interactive class. So you're going to teach them a skill, and right away, they're going to go into actually like working on it, and then present it really quick. There's a lot of presentation. So uh, this is going to be a very energetic class. Hopefully, how do you guys, how are your uh, EC classes right now? How are they, are you able to handle them? Are they running all over the place, Jane? They're a lot of fun, in what way? Mm -hmm. Good. So, do you think? Do you think? How do you think your students would do that? Um, just doing what we did in the first uh, thirty minutes, just introducing themselves, just in a regular EC class. Mm -hmm. Good. Do you think they would have had any like? Uh, do you think they would have been scared or nervous to come up and speak by themselves? Yeah. yeah. So okay. So there's gonna be. Yeah, we gotta actually kind of. Um, see from their, their perspective as well. But yeah, good thing is, we're not working with jaded middle school seventh graders, right? Think about how terrible this would be. Like with these kids that are like, oh, uh, they're growing facial hair. They have more facial hair than I do, right? And like, please, hey yeah, guys, let's dance around. No, but this is gonna be fun. You guys have young students, and most of them do already have a lot of energy, right? So you guys are working with a good class. Um, good, so. They're going to be developing their speech. He's going to make it very, very interactive the entire time. Make sure you bring your energy. And finally, at the end, they're actually going to keep practicing their speeches. They're going to come up and actually practice a lot. So that is the basic class structure. Um, also, real quick, um, when they're giving their speeches, uh, I don't know if all your branches are going to be providing these, but there uh, might be a video camera available. And you guys can videotape your students' speeches, and then when you guys have some free time, you can actually um, show them back their own videos. But what would, what would, how, would you guys, how do you guys feel when you guys watch your own videos of yourself? Brian? 
like you, like you, CCTV, you're sitting next to your uh, your HI, and then he's showing you the video. How do you feel? I'm the HI, so <laughs> you don't know how you cheater. Right. So, or anyone else? How do you guys feel when your like your HI is going over all these things with you, and you're you're like, you're sitting in class, you're like, uh, really? How do you guys? Brianna. It's a little embarrassing on us to work there. Yeah. Like, tap and tap that much. Uh -huh. Little things you don't realize you do. Uh -huh. like, I say that. Yeah. Do you realize that you're doing that in class? Not really, right? Yeah. And then, so you, even though it's you on the video, you're like, who is this person? And then, so how? Like, remember, you guys use this to give them feedback as well. So, uh, remember, encouragement. I'm just gonna keep reinforcing that today. Encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. Uh, be very, very careful. Uh, these kids are really young and very sensitive, right? So they will, when you guys, so if uh, someone tells you, uh, you're really, really ugly, but you have really, you have nice hair, you have cool shoes, you dress really, really nicely, um, and your brother's really cool. Which one do you guys, what are you guys gonna walk out of here remembering? You're really, really ugly. I kind of emphasize the really, really ugly. But, so, what is the, what do you guys, you guys all know this, right? The power of like one negative comment like overtakes five positive or something, there's that ratio, right? So be careful with those negative comments. These kids are young, they're not gonna, we're not expecting them to be Martin Luther King at the end. He's not gonna be like screaming out great hand gestures, cute voice. So we gotta actually work with what we have, right? <coughs> All right, so that video recorder, if it's available to you, you guys should be using that as well. Um, and if you guys, quick structure, so class syllabus, class one, there's a speech, that's kind of, uh, it's gonna give you kind of the terminology of what we're gonna go over. We're gonna, gonna go over that later on. And then the rest, the substance, this is where we're building the skills. These classes, two through not six, these are where they're actually going to get the skills to be able to start brainstorming. They're going to be able to make an outline, and then they're going to group ideas, and then uh, they're going to break those down into separate parts so they can develop those into well-organized speeches by the end, right? Um, good. And then they're going to be introduced. Their final project is what is a final speech. So they're actually given the final speech topic in the second class. So they're going to be developing this speech throughout the rest of the class as well. Cool, all right. How do you guys learn? Would you guys learn better if I just sat up here and lectured to you for the next hour and a half? Or would you guys like to kind of go through the material and kind of make it more like an interactive class? Which one would be better for you guys? I can do both. Lecture? You guys, I don't want you guys to fall asleep. Right? You just yell at you guys? Really? No, I'm gonna go the other way, sorry. I'm sorry to give you the choice. I thought you guys could be, yeah, let's go, let's go into the uh, interactive fun class. Why, why do you guys want a lecture? Just curious. I'm a home teacher. <laughs> you what? Home you gotta go home? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it down if we're doing interactive. How about I give you the incentive? If we're making it interactive, it'll be shorter than my two hour lecture. Which one do you want now? Huh? Yeah, here we go. All right. <coughs> All right, so now, you guys, let's actually go into the material. Day one, um, I didn't include that day one because it's pretty basic. There's a lot of, um, it's just a lot, it's a lot, it's a really fun class. You guys are basically going to be watching videos of other people speaking and your students are going to be using the grading rubrics to kind of see what they did well, what they didn't do well. Uh, so you guys can go home, it should be easy to prep. You guys are just have fun with it. They're going to go over basically uh, the terminology for coming up with speech, brainstorming. Uh, they use these over uh, brainstorming, uh, outlining, and then grouping ideas, right? So, everyone, can you guys turn to page, uh, it says zero again, but class two structure. This is going to be what classes two through six are going to look like, all right? It's going to be, if you look through the structure, it's going to be uh, the whole representation in the beginning, but then after that, it's actually going to be skills. It's just a lot of skills that we go through. But they're actually going to be fun. They're going to be really interactive. It's not like your other sale classes where it's going to be super repetitive. The cool thing about this program is they switch it up. Right? You're not doing the same exact components every single day. Is that good or bad? What do you guys think? Yeah, right? 
well, yeah, you don't want the class is going to be a little bit new and exciting every single time you open the book. Good. All right, so, all right, you guys, um, let's turn to the next page. All right, let's go to uh, page number. So they always start out with this grading rubric. Why? This is going to be in the first handout that they get. Why do you think that is? Because what are they going to be doing in the very beginning of class, every class? Exactly. And right, presenting their homework. So every class starts with about 25 minutes of the actual students going over and reciting their speeches that they practice uh, overnight. And good. So you look at the categories of information, organization. Um, and remember, like over here, real quickly, they're actually these are EC level students. So like these terminology, information, organization, logical flow, transitional, eye contact, gestures. What do you think? You should, how much of these words do you think your EC students will understand? The only, the only the ones in Korean, exactly. So, what do you guys have to do for your EC students? What do you guys? Uh, what about um, uh, Peter? Yes, Peter. How would you break? How? What would you do with this? Would you just give it to them and like, ah, hey, great? Or how would you kind of break it down? Give examples. Ask them a few examples. <coughs>
make sure, yeah, most importantly, break it down. Speak very slowly, give good examples of the different words. Okay? Cool. Then, this is going to be um, an example of one of the next page on page three. This is going to be an example of one of our exercises. And then this is an actual exercise that you guys are going to be using in your classes. <coughs> right? So you guys are going to be seeing this uh, very soon. Um, this is a review of what they learned in the first lesson. So real quick, I, you guys can just pull this in. It, it says it on the side. This is the actual printout for you guys. This is the class guide for the teachers, the instructors, facilitators. <laughs> Alright, so you guys can use this. There's good tips. I feel like I think Richard spent a good amount of time writing these excellent tips out to help you guys. Alright. So, um, but basically, what they reviewed in the last class, and you guys are going to see in the first class, is going to be uh, outline, uh, brainstorming, grouping ideas, and then outlining. So, um, let's run this first exercise real quick. This is going to be fun, right? I want you guys to follow along and fill these in, actually. So this is going to be finding a topic. They're going to start with finding a topic for their speech that they're going to work on in their class. Um, let's run through this really quickly. Actually, can I have someone stand up? Uh, number game, starting with me. One, two, <laughs> two three. Rock, scissors, paper, rock, scissors, paper. Winner. All right. Can you break down these instructions for us? Uh, I'll give you like a minute. Can you break down these instructions for us. Like these words are pretty hard, right? Before you start, they might not remember what brainstorming is, right? Uh, Waste to huge topic. How would you break this down for an EC1 level student? Well, um, I've never taught EC1. I've taught EC3. Okay, that, but I will start with before you know, brainstorm. Okay, so let's talk about what you guys want to talk about. Mm -hmm. you know, I will just give them an example. Mm -hmm. so let's come up with a topic that you guys want to talk about. You know, mm -hmm. you want to talk about me, okay? And, you know, me, or you want to talk about a teacher, school, mm -hmm. what do you want to talk about? And then I write it on the board. And what comes to your mind when you look at this word? And then school, you know, teacher, friends, mm -hmm. study. Right. So, and then you're breaking down what brainstorm. They might have never even heard this word before, right? So, brain. What is your brain? Are we breaking that the word? What? Are we breaking I think so. For EC1 students, they are... Brain and then storm? Actually, sorry. Yeah, that's, I, I didn't think that one out. But, uh, like you, could, like, you could twist that around. Like, oh, a storm. There's a lot of clouds around, right? And that's what we're using. We're using the clouds. Like different brains have different, uh, different, I different brains have different ideas. Mm -hmm. So the, the storm, the big thing, uh -huh. spread your brain and my brain and everyone's uh -huh. brain. Exactly. Put it together. Nice. Perfect. That works. Right? Very, very simple, very slow, but yeah, it works. Excellent. Good. So we're brainstorming. We need to choose a topic. Um, can you actually run this? Actually, I don't know if you've actually gotten a chance to look at it. I'll run it real quick. Um, but, so what you guys are going to do, we need to choose a topic. So we have, I'm just going to do half of these. We have about uh, 15 boxes. We're going to go up to nine. I'm going to ask you guys a quick question. And you guys, first thing that pops into your mind, write down that word, all right? Here we go. Who's your best friend? Where do you want to be right now? Who do you or did you hate most? What makes you angry? What's your favorite song? What are you good at? Um, choose one animal that you want to be. Worst day of your life. Pick students. Well, I mean, what, like, so I did the number game. I do that. Do you guys know Bang Bang? 
0075. Shoot. These also, this is bad. These work better, right? Um, what? Works in a U shape. Which one? It only works in a U shape. When you? Oh, when you have a U shape. When you have a U shape, yeah, exactly. Can you explain to the whole class how Kongo Mu Chifan works? It's like zero, I say zero, zero, seven because, yeah, we're trying to keep it in English. And then instead of bang, I say bang, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, so basically, uh, this is a good way for, it's a fun game. I think a lot of students already know this. Uh, it's zero, zero, seven, double seven James Bond, right? So you start with zero, you point to someone, anyone, and you say zero. zero. And then, who's up to? Brian? Yes. Okay. Zero. Okay, now you point someone and you're on seven. Seven, and then you can shoot someone. And then the two people next to the person that gets shot, they have to put their hands up really quickly and go, ah, like they died. Okay? It's so complicated. And so, but the students should already know. Can I say Really? So let's start with um, let's start with Jason. So all you have to do is point someone and say zero. Woo, zero. Zero. Seven. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's not me. All right, Peter. All right. Can you tell us um, from all the topics which one did you? Uh, let's see. What, uh, where do you, no, I don't want to ask you that one. What makes you angry? Uh, ignorance. Ignorance makes you angry. All right. I'm not going to go oh, over I'm sorry. No, no, no. Explain that. <laughs> oh, you can explain that. But the base, basically, I'm going to lose part, but basically all I have to do, ask your students, now that they have all these words, they pick, basically, basically pick a topic from you. They use these as a topic. Then they bring it to the next page. All right. Um, does anyone else have anything interesting? Who, where do you want to be right now? Who wrote something funny for that? Where do you want to be right now? Bed. What? Ed? Bed. Sleeping? Me yeah. too. I know, sorry. Uh, good, and animals, real quick. So you can turn all these little exercises into games too, right? It also, like, it makes it interactive. They're talking about the favorite animal. My favorite animal is this. No, my favorite animal is better than yours because of this. What are they doing? They're practicing speaking skills in front of the class. Right? If they're arguing too, right? They're getting more confidence speaking in front of everyone. Just by you, know, you can start little arguments, right? It's like a little debate. Why is it better? Alright? What what is the point that make it better than the other one? So you can talk about these. Turn everything into a little game. It should be very fun. Right? It doesn't say that run a game right here. Right? But you can turn it into a game. Good. <laughs> Let's turn the page to page number four. Um, it says brainstorming, uh, brainstorming step number two, grouping ideas. There's actually going to be on FTP for each class, there's going to be, uh, there might be a few videos up for you to watch. They're going to be in the uh, flash video format, FLV, so you might need to download that before you start the class. If you want to watch the videos, it's going to be especially important for class number one. There's going to be a lot of videos that go along with that that the students are going to be watching and kind of creating. So FLV, right? That's it, flashable. You guys familiar with that? You can just download the FLV player on your computer. Um, do you guys have, do any of you guys have projectors? Um, yeah, you guys have projectors. If you guys don't, hopefully you can turn your monitor around and show them that way. I used to do that. I never had projectors, so I just keep my monitor. Um, but for the second class, actually, the video, uh, I didn't bring it today because it's just uh, it's like a YouTube video of the idea of brainstorming. They can watch it real quickly, only the first 45 seconds for this one, and then they come up with, um, they just look at it, and then they judge. First four that came up, good or bad, all right? Good. And then, so, I want to skip down to number three. I want you guys to do this as well. Guys, go ahead, fill in number three, please. All right, choose three topics that you guys wrote down from the previous page. Real quickly. Answers or, or what the question? The topics. Oh, no, the answers, the answers. Okay. 
objects and after you guys do that, how would you guys actually explain what a topic is? Sorry, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's have Hong Kong Jirpang. Can you start? Mm -hmm. Zero. Zero. Seven. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Jay. Who, who got shot? Okay, so I think, Jay, you're a little late on the draw. You're going, ah! Okay? Oh, it's not the person who gets shot. The person that gets shot, okay? The two people next to him. Oh. I don't understand that part either, but I think that's just the game. Right? That's how it works, right? So, Jay, can you explain, um, how would you explain what a topic is in your class for you see one student? Um, I want to have you guys come up. 
All right, let's look over outlining. I want you guys to pretend like we're an EC level class. All right, you guys are going to be teaching EC level, right? This is EC through memory mega, so those pretty low level. They might have never heard the word outlining before. They've never. What are some other words in here in the instruction that they might not understand that clearly? Organize, exactly, good. So I want you guys to think about how you guys would prepare this for an easy level student, this exercise, right? It's a pretty basic exercise. They're looking at which one is easier to understand, list of just a bunch of random words, or this brainstorming chart, right? How would you guys explain this to your easy level students? Remember, they don't understand a lot of the words, and even in the instructions. And I'll give you guys about a minute. Yeah. 
Blake. Do whatever you would do in a normal class. Hi, Blake. Uh, jingle bells. Jingle bees. And Jeanette. Simple, right? <laughs> Get out of my class, bro. Oh, yeah. Take that extra time. Take this. 
if there's a little bit of extra time where people are working on it, and you see a kid and he's basically like tears are falling because he doesn't know how to fill any of this out, you might have to actually get in there. Hey, kind of, you can come on in, you know. <laughs> All right, and then um, yeah. So make sure that we're trying to make them feel comfortable, right? They're really well. Make sure that they're feeling really comfortable. Try to break it down. If there's a kid that's falling behind, does anyone have any other suggestions what they do when there's a student that just doesn't seem like they're falling, following what you're saying at all? Any other suggestions for the low, low levels? What do you? What else do you guys do in your classes? You can use more gesture. Mm -hmm. You can use more body language. Body expressive. Exactly. Right. These things. What is a tree? Right? If they don't know what a tree is, they're like, ooh, fruits, apple, right? Little things like that. Gestures are important. Good. You guys, that's why you have to have a lot of energy for these low levels, right? You're going to be actually kind of like a, you're like a clown almost. That's how I feel like sometimes. <laughs> Good. So you guys, basically, yeah, I want you guys to emphasize kind of breaking down the instructions for them before they actually jump in. I think that's going to be very important. Uh, what about Jason? Can you actually, since you came from such a far distance, can you actually just run this section for us real quickly? Um, yeah, or just explain which one's easier. How would you break this down um, real quickly? I would just, you know, be, first of all, obviously what's easier, words or a picture? Pictures are always easier. Mm -hmm. what, what's that? It's a cat. Mm -hmm. Wow, great, it's a cat. Mm -hmm. And what does the cat do? How many things? Let's count. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Yay, one, two, three. Well, what's the first thing? Comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be comfortable. Like, obviously, I'd be super slow. Be like, okay, uh -huh. how many things <laughs> do we have? Three. So the first thing, what is it? Comfortable. Uh -huh. What do you think of when you think of comfortable? It's quiet, not loud. But it's just, I don't know, very slow. Obviously, this would be easier. Maybe the picture, the picture mm -hmm. is a little bit better. Yeah, that is, what's easier, pictures or words? They know what words are, they know what pictures are. Yeah, it's right away. Then, then it's going to help build their confidence. All right, pictures are easier. Boom, we're going to go into that. And if you look, think, uh, this is the program guide, so they do. If you look over here, there are a lot of tips, right? So they're saying, there's B is easier, they actually tell you, right? Uh, it's easy to remember if there are big chunks together, right? So if you guys can use these tips on the side when you guys are prepping, too. And right? make sure that you guys are using these. They are helpful. These are just suggestions, though. These are not, uh, these are not built into the class. You don't have to use these. Right? They are actually, I was looking through them. I would use them. Well, I would use a lot of them. Right? They're actually very, very helpful. But um, then this is where we go into more of the skill teaching. This is where your teaching skills are actually going to have to come in. All right, we're gonna teach them. How you see students? Have they gotten to patterns of organization yet? No, they don't know what poos are. Right? They know what poo is, but they don't. POOs are. Right? So you guys are gonna be breaking down basic patterns of organizations for them. Right? What are the uh, patterns of organization? Right? You guys all know these, right? We got POOs. Huh? Listing. Listing. Good. What else? Time order. Time order. And Cause and effect, compare and contrast, right? And process, process illustration, there's right? Good, I'm glad you guys know that. Excellent, good. So, but these, they're gonna be focusing on these three. How would you guys, uh, real quick, um, Hemi, can you explain what a um, listing, can you give me an example of a listing uh, pattern organization? How would you put that, how would you guys break that down in your class? What is listing? They've never heard this before. Or anyone. This, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How to make the kimchi? Yeah, okay, good. What kind of, they don't even know what a transition is yet. Right? But this is a great time to introduce them to those kind of words. What kind of transition words do we use in listing? First. Second. Third. Third. So this is a great time to introduce those kind of top class ideas as well. Right? Get them ready for CL class, the higher level CL classes. Right? This is a supplementary 
uh, summer workshop. So this should be helping them to do better in their regular classes as well. We can teach them real skills that they're going to be using in other classes as well. All right, so this is a good time, right? So good, perfect example, kimchi. They all know what kimchi is. They've probably seen their grandmas make kimchi before, right? Great, first you gotta buy the cabbage, right? First, second, third. Who can give me an example of a problem solution? How would you break the problem solution pattern of organization down? Uh, real quick, um, look, I'm not called on. Uh, Nicole, pattern of organization, problem solution. This is like cause and effect. Just explain what cause and effect is. Yeah, or you can explain it or we'll use an example too. Right? So you didn't do homework. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to you in class? Mm -hmm. okay. If you didn't do homework, what do you get in class? Yeah. F. Exactly. Right? So what was the cause of your F? Why did you get an F? Mm -hmm. So you always have to ask the why question to find out the cause. Mm -hmm. What could the other results? Like what, what would happen to you if you go home and you get into homework? Mm -hmm. uh, mom, angry. Okay, that's another effect. Exactly, right? I use that all the time. You get an F in my class and you show your mom what's going to happen. <laughs> right? Yeah, I use that all the time. Yeah. So, easy, right? Patterns of organization. These are skills that they're not really familiar with yet. So you can reinforce these. They're going to be looking at these a lot. They're going to be practicing these a lot. Right, so you guys, you guys should be able to go through this. Make sure, right, they understand what a problem is and a solution is. You guys have to make this really, really basic. What is a problem, real quickly? How do you explain what the what a problem is? Something. Yeah. My problem today was uh, uh, my dog <coughs> fell over my clothes, and that was very stinky. It was a solution. So what did I do to make it better? My dog peed on all my clothes. Solution? I wash them. I wash them. Or Febreze. There we go. I was going for, I Febreze everything. Washing clothes creates a hassle. Do you guys have dryers in your apartments? Do you have a dryer? What question is that? Do you have a dryer? No. Yeah. You've had anything made. Yeah. Really? Seriously. God, I miss dryers. It's like the fluffy, warm feeling when you put on the clothes that has a dryer. Ah, man. Yeah. Febreze. Way to go. Okay. Good. So basically what you're doing, <coughs> you can pull out a student and use their topic to show them examples, right? How to write, write these up. That's what they're going to be doing on the next page on their own. So you guys, basically um, on your own, I want you guys to pretend like you're an EC student looking at this blank page. I go, do this page. What would be a problem? Picture. Okay, what would you say? My kid would just start drawing a picture. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. This looks like a CTP page for like a blank picture where you draw a poster. So, basically, this is they're doing exactly what they just learned two seconds ago. How'd you break it down? What would you suggestions? Basically, kind of what we just did, right? We're gonna go. We could first. Uh, we could pick. So, what my suggestion would be? Um, you want to pick one of these relations, relationships. Uh, let's do uh, problem solving. Topic, uh, what was another topic that you picked? Jeff, what was the topic that you circled earlier? Do you remember? Yeah, I do. What was uh, it? It was actually a favorite song. Favorite song? Yeah, uh, I picked, uh, it was Michael Jackson's I Wanna Rock With You. Oh, I Wanna Rock With You. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jacobs. Nice, right, good. So, this is the topic. Favorite song? <coughs> Do you want? Did you want to guess more specifically? I want to rock with you. Yeah, I love you. We yeah, just put favorite song, uh -huh. and then I just put I want to rock with you. Cool. So I can just tell you all the ideas that I want to rock with you. Or I mean, uh, but I want to turn this into one of these patterns of organization. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so so listing, 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 listing. Let's do listing. Cool. Exactly. So what can we do? Uh, we can say that first mm -hmm. thing is Michael Jackson's best song. Mm -hmm. Second, it has a groovy beat. <laughs> groovy? <laughs> Makes you want to dance. Yeah, seriously, I love uh, that. Third, it is easy to sing along. Sing along, good. And then, yeah, praise them. If they know how to use these transitions already, praise them. Like, holy, holy, 
That's amazing, great job. But if they don't, which most likely they're probably not going to be using these, yeah. What can what kind of words would make help to organize, make this clear for your uh, when you're giving a speech? You want to break it apart a little bit, so you use transitions like first, second, third. Cool. But yeah, this is a very very basic idea. It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but yeah, right? Favorite song. Breaking this apart. Listing. This is listing. Good. All right. Of course, that's basically how you run these exercises. Um, I don't think we have to go through every exercise. I want. I did promise you that we'd get out of here. I do. So basically, they're going to go over the different. They learn the skill kind of, and um, they then did learn. They're going to practice. That's what these pages are for. They're for the practice. Right. In the end. Uh, I want you guys to go to page 10. Page 10 real quickly. This is where they actually, cool thing is, they have prompts for them a lot of time. Or they do have a structure, a basic structure for them. They're going to fill this out. And then they're going to come up in the class. Uh, they come up in front of the class. And then what are they going to do? They're going to speak for how long? It says at the bottom. Is that a short or a long speech? Yeah. Long for DC student, right? Short for us, because I can talk about nothing for two seconds and get away with exactly what I'm doing right now, right? So, but for them, it is kind of, it's intimidating, right? So you guys have to remember, keep encouraging them, uh, help them out. If they stumble, you can help them out. First couple classes, of course, right? If they're stumbling in the dime, leading questions, right? Oh, you're doing great. But then you were going to talk about, remember you're going to talk about Hermione next, right? What were we going to see about her? Help them out, right? This, you can, like, don't leave them hanging. Don't let, don't let them start crying or else they're never going to come back, right? You want them to be happy in the class. All right, so I want you guys to get an example of the homework. This is going to be, actually on page 13, take a look. This is going to be the actual final speech. This is going to be the final project that they're going to be working on. They give up the final project from in the second class, so they can keep working on it. Perfect. These are going to be shown, they're going to be videotaped and shown to their parents. This is going to be their final output. So this is going to reflect not only on the student, but who? The teacher. The teacher. So do you think it's a good thing that they're starting really early on this topic? Or yeah. yeah, they're going to get a lot of practice, which is good for you guys, too. Right? You don't want their parents to see a kid falling over and dying right in front of the class. So good. Um, it's going to be about either, like these are going to be uh, changed for different levels, but for this level it's going to be, this is level two, either my dream job, my role model. They do the same thing, go over this with them, right? Um, make sure that they understand what's happening. If there's any weaker students, right? help them out. Really, really have to, you guys have to hold their hands through this. This, do you guys, how would you guys think with all the material that we looked at already? How do you think your EC class would do? General class. I, I think if they understand definitions of certain terms mm -hmm. and you're good at explaining it to mm -hmm. them, then they should be able to think about it mm -hmm. and have an idea. Yeah. But you might have to actually double check to make sure that you're following the model. Exactly. Right. I think it's going to be what you said. You have to s explain, make sure that they understand, double check. Right. I feel like ask them what you're supposed to do. It. But eventually, by the end, it's going to be easier for them. But like in the beginning, just ask them, like, okay, what are we going to do in this, in this section? Remember, we see outlining at the top. What do we do in outlining? Make them think about it. And then they actually uh, bring it to the class. Good. So this becomes their homework. Right. They're going to always have. If you look at the very last page, page 15, <coughs> they're going to write out this, they're going to have some time in class to write this out. Then this is what they're going to be presenting in the next class. So for, has, who's thought intensives in this class? So not that many people actually. So what is the schedule of intensive? Right? Is it like a normal class? Three, is it during three, three hours. It's for, yeah, it's just in the morning. It's in the morning. <laughs> How many days a week are they usually? Two. two to three, right? This class is going to be two, two, two classes a week. So, um, how do you think the students feel about being there, uh, being in your class, 
9 30 during summer. Like, what, uh, how would you feel if I told when you were five, uh, when you were in fifth grade, and I said, stop running around, you're going to class during your summertime? Yeah. That's pretty bad, right? So. I would the kids would be more energetic than they are in the evening time. Hmm? Uh, have you ever taught intensive class? No, but I'm just, that would just my, my, my guess. I was a Okay, what's the finish? Okay. Alright. Uh, just make sure, yeah, real quick. Intensives. Basically, it's a good time. It's gonna, you guys are going to be tired. They're going to be tired. They're not, gonna be want, they're not really going to want to be there, and you're not going to really want to be there. It's a good time to bond with these kids, right? You guys are going like, to share the struggle together, and you guys are going to kind of uh, work together to, um, to kind of grow together. Uh, we're actually out of time right now, but uh, do you guys have any last questions, comments? Is there anything I didn't cover that you guys think you uh, come on, Jay? Um, day seven through nine. Day seven through day seven through nine. That is going to cover um, those. Those are going to be presentation skills. So these are things like eye contact. These are refining. And then last class is going to be the final project. This is when they're presenting in front of the video. Okay. Um, and I think that is. Everything. Alright, you guys have fun with this class. That's why I need to emphasize have fun.